Yeah. Woo. Live. Yeah, live. We are actually, yeah. Live from your phlegmatic ESG machine. I told you it was important to buy one of those. You, didn't, you thought it was a waste of company resources. Honestly, I, 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 it was an overspend. I still don't see the value. It's yet another Manic Monday edition of Business Pants, joined by analyst whole Matt Muscardi. Yeah. Oh. See, if we had yeah. the ability to play overlapping sound effects, the crowd could cheer while the theme music was playing. But I've I've lodged <laughs> my thoughts with Riverside. How dare you, Riverside? In today's pre-fermented, post-colonial, plant-based CEO pay ratio bag called November 6, 2023. Uh, we're, f- well, we're filtering the ESG news through a giant stupid game. That's what we're doing. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Isn't that what we always do? <laughs> it seems like the same thing we do every week. Let's do it, Hey, though. look, we if did- you want to... If you want- you know, S and P's version of this show. Go ahead, go over there. Get the <laughs> get the three hour interview with Come some on. managing S- director of some bank. I don't care. S and P doesn't even want the S and P version of the S and P show. C D P meets uh, Barclays. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Well, I will say this before yeah. we launch into the the actual news. Today we interviewed Allison Taylor, the oh, yeah. who's a uh, clinical professor at NYU Stern. She is she's business a school. The not Tish, intelligence. Not agent. Tish, but Stern, the business school. She was. She described herself. We got a hold of her book that doesn't come out until February. Yeah, a corporate intelligence agent. She sounds like a spy. Um, we're talking to uh, Rachel Allen back is this week. We're oh recording. God, that's right. Yeah, on live Wednesday, from Australia. Mm-hmm. Live from Australia on Wednesday. We're gonna drop a clip from the Nell Minow podcast that we recorded yep. last Thursday. And don't forget and we'll Monday. The yeah. full thing. Monday, we got the Hall of Famer Doug Chaw coming back to the show, right? Monday, Doug Chaw's coming back. Um, we, ha- we have like a massive... Uh, oh, we went from nobody wanted to talk to us to now we have so many people coming that we can't even keep up. Yeah, and we're going to keep this going. So please, if you know anyone, reach out. And If you want to come on the show and not pitch your shitty product, but just have a conversation like a normal human being. I mean, you can pitch your shitty product if you let me laugh at you for five minutes straight. Yeah, fine. well, that's fine. I, no, here, I'll rephrase. You want to come on the show and pitch your shitty product, feel free to pay us some advertising dollars and we'll pitch for you. We'll, we're, we're, we're simple. Perfect segue. And, I, and apologies to John Lukomnik if you're listening, but our show today is being sponsored by FreeFlow Analytics, the only ESG correct. data platform to measure real board influence. See how I went from <laughs> shitty product to... I, it, was right to, it was seamless. It was, it was <laughs> seamless. Nobody, nobody's going to notice. Uh, but yeah, we have a bunch of interviews coming up. This starting this week, we got a bunch that'll drop on Wednesdays and Thursdays. So keep Too your much. eye out for that. Otherwise, we, got, we always have a new show coming. Don't forget, we got a new show. I didn't even mention it. We got a new show coming um, soon. We have gotten suggestions of names like Proxy oh, tell Underpants. Me. We got the no, name Proxy no, Underpants like was one of the suggestions. I don't like that. I mean, we want to be taken seriously, people. Just Plus, it's so U.S. centric because in in the U.K., underwear is just called pants. So, oh, is uh, it really? Yeah. So it's it's pants. Pants are your underwear and trousers. I thought are your it would pants. be your britches. So it just gets confusing. Underpants. I don't know what that means. Well, we anyway. should be the proxy britches. I then. want to be serious for once. Can we call yeah, it we're like? Be half can serious. we call it like um, CNBC's The Proxy Show? Can we call it that? <laughs> <laughs> Do we have to be affiliated with CMC? Uh, who cares? That? Who cares? That's but that show is coming up. We're going to record the first one this week and we'll probably be dropping them starting next week. But uh, we'll keep you posted. Right, come on, Otherwise, let's do, let's do this show. Yeah. I also want you to know, as oh. part of the new shows, yeah, I have dedicated some budget for you to find approximately one new song. I was thought you say one new hoodie. <laughs> no, there's no budget for that. Just going to keep this the gross songs blue one. Uh, okay, here we go, Matt. I got a good one for you. This is the React to the ESG Business News Headline Game Top 9 Headlines. You're, you have <laughs> a terrible game name. It's really amazing. Uh, because, you know, Top 10 is stupid. We're Top 9 over here at Free Yeah, no one does Top 10. And here's how it works, Matt. You just... You, just, you, you have the utmost discretion to rate it any way you want. You can go one to 10. 
You can go Ooh. five unicorns. You can go. Oh. You can go like ESG ratings agency. Call it a, a, a triple, you know, Z or whatever. <laughs> whatever you want to do, right? Can I do it a mixed like a one? Yes, absolutely. Three, one absolutely. to double B. Absolutely, and I'm and I got I'm starting off strong. All right, let's do this. This first headline is just a. This is an all time headline. I'm a little disappointed because I sent it to our company earlier and nobody really responded. But this is this is kind of an all time headline. I mean, you, no, uh, Jesse did respond. Okay, and here I we go. Think she summed up our thoughts. China, and this is a real from a real news source, Business Insider. China boldly claims it has a plan to mass produce humanoid robots that can reshape the world within two years. <laughs> oh. <laughs> So while you're dithering away, arguing about like, you know, should we kill the acronym of ESG and what does S really mean? Here's what China's up to. Yeah. <laughs> so while you're you're appearing on the S&P podcast <laughs> talking about <laughs> privacy and security, China, meanwhile, has an army of robots. Uh, it, this does sound, uh, it sounds Muskian of China, doesn't oh, it? Oh, we're, get, we're getting to Musk later. The good news here, Matt, is this Chinese startup Fourier Intelligence said... It aspires to deliver thousands of robots in 2024 that can move at five kilometers an hour. So we, oh. Matt, we can still outrun them. This is great news. I mean, <laughs> right? Great. Init, That's initially, really slow. Yeah. So just keep <laughs> keep trim, eat healthy, because as of now, we can outrun these stupid just humanoid <laughs> robots. Get a hold of the weight loss drugs that are everywhere now. You're gonna need it. You're, and you're going to need it. There's a whole new running. value. Yeah, <laughs> Pfizer stock is going up because there's a whole new value to staying in shape. You are running. Novo Nordisk, Eli Lilly, we are betting on you Actually, to run I, away from the robots. I'm curious how you're going to rate this map, but I want to repeat that I'm not kidding. This is actually, this is news out of the China's Ministry of Industry, Industry and Information Technology. They published a massive uh, roadmap of its future plans. And unlike... Elon Musk, who you referenced to, they might actually build what they say they're going to build. Well, yeah, maybe. I do maybe. think. I, I well, I think. Um, I'm. I am waiting for. I, so I love this story because it's terrifyingly terrible. <laughs> right. I, I'm going to give this uh, a nine out of seventeen. Um, All right. Oh, wait. Oh. Okay. No. No. A nine out of eleven. Out That's of seven. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm wondering when we get the first report from Mark Zuckerberg that says, you see, China did steal our, all our technology, and yeah. that's what they're using to I build gotta tell you, humanoid Matt, robots. I'm glad you mentioned, Mark, because I didn't have a way of getting the story in because it wasn't this kind of show. But I, I I'll say this. Meanwhile, at American big data companies uh, <laughs> that are controlled by one stupid college dropout dictator, a.k.a. Meta Platforms, Mark Zuckerberg. The headline about Mark today was that he busted his knee training for a mixed martial arts um, fight and that he's like getting surgery. I mean, this is what the guy who has no oversight at his, his at his like, you know, multinational social media dominant company. Monopoly. He's, Monopoly. Yeah, yeah. He is training for fighting and getting hurt. I mean, it's crazy, right? Is it, is it not abs absurd? Look, we free flow analytics was created to measure the people inside of companies, like in management teams, just like sports teams. So Mark is just living what we <laughs> built. That's all. He's just he's like, okay, well, they're gonna measure me like I'm on a sports team. I'm gonna join a sports team. I'm I gotta say, Matt, MMA. For once, I'm gonna say that the owners of sports teams might be more serious than like regular oh, people. Oh no! Right? I mean, <laughs> I mean, dude, like you know. Ha Hand off the reins. Like, get rid of your dual class shares. Get back your to one share, one that. vote. Like, get some actual independent directors. Like, dude, you're you're. This is not. It's not right. It's not good. All right, that's. Does, I, I'm not even here to talk about Zuck. But does the oversight board have to weigh in if he wants to sunset his shares? <laughs> is, Moving is on. That, oh. <laughs> Uh, here's a, a nerdy one. Bumble founder and CEO to step down early next week. Slack. CEO to succeed her. All right. Oh. Be before I get to the, before I get to the meat of the story, um, I'm looking at you, CNBC. These people have names. I mean, yes, I, they I, do. I mean, use their names. I, I hate that we hide behind this, but the Bumble founder and CEO is actually Whitney Wolf Hurd, and the Slack CEO who's taking over is Lydian 
Jones. Uh, so a woman's replacing Whitney. Uh, I got a lot of things to say here, but um, I'll leave you with this. According to our data, Whitney Wolf Heard controls 64% of the influence at Bumble. Wow. And Matt, she's not actually leaving. She's transitioning to her role as executive chair. So I'm going to leave you with all that. Yeah, baby. That's right. That's what I like to hear. Finally. You know what? I love this. I'm giving this a um, triple A. I'm giving oh, this wow. a triple A. I love it because, look, usually it's a male founder or CEO or executive who sticks who around too long. a woman human mm-hmm. body shield in front of a live grenade while they join the executive mm-hmm. chair role and then do nothing. They just they collect yep. a check equal, if not larger, to the CEO, mm-hmm. and they sit on the board you know, for 10 meetings a year. The fact that we have a, a woman founder – who is you know a billionaire in her own right now yep. doing the exact same thing. Although she's killing the value of his shares enough that maybe she's not anymore. But I hear you. Yeah, Aww. keep going. Um, but I do like that she's doing the exact same thing. At, at right. least it proves that a woman can do it. I got t- two observations here. First of all, can you believe that the Bumble CEO job is more attractive than Slack CEO? I don't really... Uh, that one kind of surprises me. Although Slack, of course, bought by Salesforce, so they're not, they're, really, they're not their own entity anymore. Yeah, I think that's basically, I want to be a real CEO. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Except that L- L- Lydia... What's her name? Lydia Ann Jones. Yeah. Lydia Ann Jones. You're not a real CEO. That's no, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So. What's the difference? <laughs> really, what's the difference? She's a subsidiary of the founder, right? Yeah, that's yeah. correct. So, yeah. so, but it is a slight upgrade because at least you're not the CEO underneath a CEO who's underneath the founder, right? Um, yeah, you're the because Salesforce has co CEOs, one of whom that's is the true. Founder, it's like right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and a founder. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so at, the, at least this is closer. Yeah, that's true. But, yeah. So the other thing I wanted to, to mention here is that Bumble is quite the outlier in our database. And yes, our database is available at freeflowanalytics.com. Um, Matt, Bumble, uh, after this transition happens, another director is leaving. They're going to be, that board's going to have only two dudes, two men. Oh. Right? I, have you, can you think of a board with fewer dudes? Out, out of how many? Three? Yeah, do you think Strive Asset Management is gonna like sue them for only having two male directors? Isn't oh, that, that the next is step? An awesome. I, you know what? I I, I want to know exactly. It would be funny if Strive somehow managed to vote against every the, woman yeah. on the board. But they're gonna use this to their advantage, right? They're they're gonna use this as an example of like diversity being racist or whatever stupid thing they're gonna come up with. I, yeah, like well, to a point, would, women. Wait, to a point, women is misogynistic, right? Because because it's against. Men, right? It's sexist against men. Is that what they're going to say? It's true. They would have to be able to prove or show that, like, the women are less qualified than men to have done the job, which is not possible. They they'll, can't possibly yeah. do it. They're probably going to nominate Adam Newman for that board. Is what I, I, that they're probably going to do in a proxy contest. Adam it, it Newman and SBF. That's who they're going to put up. <laughs> well, uh, moving on. Finally, the meritocracy works. Uh, in a story close to my home, although not why I'm picking it, growing U.S. anger. Uh, this is at a Wall Street Journal, Washington Post, Washington Post. The Washington Post has a new CEO, actually. Uh, growing U.S. anger with electric utilities finds its epicenter in Maine. Maine residents will vote tomorrow on a ballot measure that would dissolve its investor-owned utilities and replace them with a nonprofit. Are you aware of this? Whoa! I mean, this is like stakeholder shareholder battle going on here on the ballot box. Yeah. I mean, we have decided though, long, long ago, that that these are they're they're utilities, right? They are they are by definition a utility, and they're regulated. Wait, what are you talking about? As in, they are a highly regulated utility by the government. They can't mm-hmm. like rate electric set, companies. Just, uh, electric yeah. companies. Mm-hmm. They can't rate set however they want. There's a lot of constraints and. And in fact, people have argued that you should regulate e- banks after the financial crisis. Are, are they mm-hmm. utilities or not? Social media, um, in the internet, right? Like ISPs, internet, prov- the provision of the internet, isn't that just a utility? Mm-hmm. And it's really a call for a greater oversight. Making them a nonprofit is Good sort point. of the next, next yeah. natural step in that progression, that yeah. they're community-owned and it right. shouldn't be a for-profit enterprise. I think it's a great, actually... 
perspective here because what you're saying is that in lieu of actual oversight, which we all need, we're going to get involved, right? We're we're basically going to like put ourselves in to deal with this mess. And I, I like that you brought up kind of the meta platforms model because maybe that's what needs to be done. I wonder if it's going to be a dual class nonprofit like <laughs> Sam Altman's. Uh, yeah, so people I have with, to give this a score. P- people I with like bow this. ties have um, three votes per share. <laughs> Oh, no. I got to go buy a bow yeah. tie. Yeah. What's your vote on this one? Um, my vote on this is um, four out of five globes. I think that's <laughs> okay. correct. Uh, next one. This is just this just cracked me up uh, and made me fearful at the same time. Um, this is from the New York Times. Chatbots may hallucinate more often than many realize. Uh, oh according to the article... Job. When summarizing facts, chat GPT technology makes things up about 3% of the time, according to research, and Google's AI makes things up at, about, at a rate of about 27%. <laughs> I mean, even the, even the 3% to me is absolutely frightening, but uh, the 27% of Google, yeah. For, well, 3% does not sound like a lot. Like, actually... He, if you should talk be, to another really? human, why? Why, why should it be anything b- above right. zero? But listen, the yeah. first conversation you have with a human any day is, yeah. "Hey, how are you?" And ninety-eight yeah. percent of people lie right then. The first conversation say, you have. Yeah, I was going to say that uh, the New York Times actually uh, talked about me in that article, and it says that I make stuff up ninety-four percent of the time. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's true. So what do we? What do we? Um, I mean, three percent seems like. Oh, it so you're okay with that? Three, yeah. I, just, I guess it depends on what the three percent is. If it's like inject, you know, seven milligrams of insulin into your body instead of two, that mm-hmm. seems like a Probably. bad thing Maybe. to lie about. Well, Matt, but, it's, it is replacing I don't know, is it not? So it must be replacing yeah. some fact with something. I guess it is. It doesn't yeah. It doesn't say I don't know very well. No. <laughs> what, Google has so much information. Yeah. How did they manage to get so much wrong? Like, be, how? Be, I'll tell you why. Because they're uh, another one of these, like, duopolies run by two men who control everything with, a, like, a fake CEO in place. Maybe it's just, like, they're they're their balance of power, their oversight, it's just all wrong, right? It yeah. just doesn't make sense. I guess there's no incentive to not lie um, yeah. because the two people in charge What are you giving care. this one? I'm giving this um, two and a half thumbs down. <laughs> I actually might agree with that one. All right, next uh, <laughs> headline. This is just bizarre. I mean, especially for considering the world that we cover here. Um, I- I'm still having trouble wrapping my head around this one. Colombian... Rum company, you know, like the booze. Okay, yeah, um, I'm with you. Dick, Dictador, that's the name of the company. Appoints, I it. appoints, and this is out of uh, foxbusiness.com, appoints a new AI robot called Mika as the company CEO. What? Yeah, I'm not kidding around here. So Mika is a research project between Hanson Robotics and the, the rum company, Dictator, who customized the CEO to represent the company and its unique values. Here's what's crazy, Matt, before you react to that. No. What's no. crazy is that this is a Colombian rum company. This is what they're calling it. But it's actually a company based in Poland. Okay. It's a Polish company. But the CEO, the AI CEO, who's meant to represent the company in its unique values is a woman of color. <laughs> I don't like. I really don't know what's no, going it's on. No, like, it is. No, it's not a woman of color. Well, I'm just saying, like, that's who the picture looks like. And it's this again, this an is AI. a Polish. Okay, well, I'm just it's telling a, you, it, she's meant to emulate a woman of color. I guess unless it was trained entirely on text and thoughts and feelings of people of color. Yes, it is not a woman of color. Okay, it but they created an trained. avatar. But they created an avatar with okay, human-like skin. 
it's what's amazing about it is yeah. that the 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 sheer arrogance that you can train the thing on like what you know seven white bros think is important and yeah. then make it look like a person of color yeah. to make with glasses about it. With, with gla- she's wearing glasses <laughs> I like it she doesn't even have 2020 vision like that, <laughs> that like she Yeah it's a bad start imagine terminator <laughs> imagine imagine Arnold Schwarzenegger with the glasses on during I mean, that? I mean if you went through all this trouble to make a robot yeah, who's get supposed the to be more right. efficient at get least right. make it be able to see right Here's the here's another funny part of it is that Mika said on the company website that uh according to the company Mika said that with advanced artificial intelligence and machine learning algorithms, I can swiftly and accurately make data-driven decisions, blah, 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 right? Yeah, yeah, okay. But according to the Fox Business Reporter, uh, she said that there's a significant delay in the time it takes Mika to process and respond to your question. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I mean, we're jo- we're laughing, but uh, when you hear one of the next uh, stories coming up, I-, I don't know, maybe we won't be laughing for long on this. Well, I have but, a lot of questions, some legal, yeah. some not, like... Like does do, do they do they have do they get a golden hello? Did they is there um, good, like good a, question. A, pay, a pay package that you have to vote on? Is there mm-hmm. like uh, who do you hold liable if the company does something wrong? You can't sue an AI bot and, and a company called mm-hmm. Dictator who sells Dictator. rum does seem like a kind of company that when they do something wrong yeah. they want to be able to say it was the AI's fault. Let's right? not forget that they call themselves a Colombian rum company and they're based in. Poland. I mean, the yeah, whole thing is. There's a is lot bizarre. of problems here. Yeah. I, I'm giving this a negative 40%. <laughs> All right. In light of that last um, headline, let's get right to Elon Musk. Oh, um, I don't And like let's that. stay with AI. Elon Musk says. Uh, this is a headline. Com- this is coming out of a lot of news sources. Elon Musk says AI will eventually create a situation where. No job is needed. He is predicting. <laughs> he is now <laughs> officially offensive. predicting a no job future. I, which I, and yet he also wants to. Of course, right? He's talking about he wants to like overpopulate. Right? He he's worried about there being too few people on the planet. I just, I'm now thoroughly confused of what the hell is going on. I'm, but yeah, go Look, ahead. I, I, he is predicting something that <laughs> was predicted ten years ago. When Pixar made the movie Wall-E, okay. I didn't, but like, barring the cute story of two robots falling in love, yeah. it went horribly, horribly badly for the people. Does anybody? Do, did anybody else see that movie? Yeah. I have kids. Mm-hmm. The people part is horrible. They're yeah. all weigh six hundred pounds. They're in floating things. They do nothing. They can't even eat. Their teeth don't work. They're drinking out of straws, and yeah. they haven't been back to Earth because they polluted it so badly. Wally already figured this out. It's not great. It's not good. Yeah. So no job needed is not a great thing for humanity. Actually, when yeah. we're all unemployed, mm-hmm. d- like, do we feel good about that? Or is that not a good state? Like humans don't like that. We I like mean, humans. Productive. I think humans, I was going to say humans and animals. Yeah, there, there is definitely an enjoyment in productive energy right i mean can you imagine if you could if you if you didn't have a job and you spent all day on twitter all like, day on what, yeah mm-hmm. what a horrible life that would be at the same um, time matt elon musk's artificial intelligence startup xai released its first model named grok g r o k i already hate it Screenshots of Grok's responses show the chatbot swearing and mocking its users. Oh, so this wait intentionally a and and part of this Matt is that it, and and his selling point is that is because it's based on the data that you get from Twitter, his the company he owns X, that cesspool of a company, and that and and this is going to be the alternative to to models like ChatGPT. Wow, that are, a model that is trained to be more civil. This one is just a pure asshole. Well, I lo- this look is, again, Matt. This is real life. This is actually happening. I like that he's at least honest about what. <laughs> I mean, you. Yeah. It's like he's the living embodiment of garbage in, garbage out. We talk about that in data all the time. Good for and let you, me add, Elon. Let me add one more tidbit before you rank this this overall uh, Elon Musk uh, headline. Ex CEO Linda Yaccarino stepped in to remove a pro Hitler post. And an apparent divergence from Elon Musk's free speech absolutism. So that's what's going over there on X. Oh, she stepped in. Yeah. 
So what? So what do you think about this? The, uh, I want you to write the the original headline. Elon Musk says AI will eventually create a situation where no job is needed. Look, I'm gonna rate this. Uh, I'm gonna rate this blue cheese on a scale of blue cheese to aged cheddar. This is not great. Well, that's that's tough because um, it, that's a subjective rating. What you just gave because you know a lot of people have different interpretations of blue cheese. So I don't know yeah, what I, feel, I don't know how to wrong. feel about this. <laughs> they're wrong. Blue cheese is the bottom. All right, let's try to have a little bit more fun. I have three more headlines for you. Uh, th- <laughs> That's possible, yeah. We spoke to an NYU business professor today, so I, I kind of wanted to highlight another NYU business professor. That's Susie Welch from NYU Stern School. She said, this headline's making a lot of play today. She said, Gen Z remote workers are probably not going to become CEOs. Oh, I love when you can generalize about an entire generation of millions upon millions of people. Yeah. Here's what, here's, this is the part of the quote I really like. She said, the young people who choose to have that life that go into work maybe one or two days a week or never and work entirely remotely, they may have a version of success that is not our version of success. Okay. So that one you're going to be me there. dead, Susie. But what? But what is that? That's what throws me like, because I was like kind of looking in the article for like, what is the version of success that we're leaning on? But you notice how she, what, what version of success is she aligning with over there at NYU? I guess with the, with the ver, the version of a the CEO's version of success. I mean, she realizes that these companies that that often there are fifty thousand non CEOs and one CEO. So. Most people are probably not going to become CEOs, Susie Welch. Right? Am I wrong about <laughs> that? That is correct. So that the whole correct. the whole argument is just I find it to be so juvenile. It's like a middle no, what school it is, argument. Yeah, it's myopic, right? So Su- Susie Welch, um, she has been at NYU since um, uh, she she started in September of this year. Oh, so been there for a while but she well, I'm glad she got her job before the date which no one's going to have a job because that's what Elon's <laughs> predicting yeah That's true um, yeah. but she she's a senior advisor to Brunswick Group which Uh-oh. is a CEO advisory firm <laughs> Okay, there we go. Which, okay. which means so that's all she version. does is I, really I get it represent now. the dumbass yeah. CEOs from today. Yeah. So, Susie, you get a big fat, um, I'm giving you a double <laughs> zero out of um, 100. Uh, this is an easy one. Tyson, Tyson Foods. We love talking about Tyson. Yeah, we. D- I don't love talking about Tyson, no. Uh, another company that is a fake public company that's uh, controlled by the Tyson family. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Tyson recalls almost 30,000 pounds of dinosaur shaped chicken nuggets after consumers found metal pieces in them. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, like. I, you got to love that headline, though. Come I, on. <laughs> I, will, I, I will give the headline um, a, uh, a kimchi on a scale of mung beans to uh, kimchi. Is there something wrong with me that I was just fixated on the fact that why do we need chicken nuggets to be shaped like dinosaurs? Like, what is even happening <laughs> yeah, in our that's world? That's a really like, good what? question. <laughs> look, look, if your children won't eat the chicken nuggets that are shaped like chicken nuggets, you've yeah. already got other problems, existential because, problems. Because I've been a child, Matt. Chicken nuggets are just delicious. They're I mean, just a child. chicken nuggets. Like, what are we doing need, here? You don't, I don't need know what's them happening. To be a dinosaur. You don't need them to be a dinosaur. Yeah. Although I guess you do need them to be a dinosaur if you're going to use metal pieces to create the the, the infrastructure that makes <laughs> Less, them a dinosaur. I don't know. Yeah, maybe it holds the neck up because I'm picturing a T-Rex, so maybe it holds the neck up. <laughs> I didn't think structurally uh, the structural <laughs> soundness of the dino chicken nugget. Uh, and finally, uh, in our what is this? Our top nine rate the stupid ESG business news. I don't know what's going on with headlines. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. Go back to the original name <laughs> for November sixth, twenty twenty three. We should have had Nell play this game. She would have loved this game. Yeah, yeah. No, nothing so- sends, sounds credible like this game. Yeah, I had a uh, when we interviewed Nell Minow. What what nobody knows is that I had a separate camera on Nell, and I noticed that. She was hovering her mouse button right over the exit button of the yeah. of our of our of our interview, so she was always ready to bounce quickly she out was, of our. She, actually, <laughs> honestly, Nell spent over an hour with us. Yeah, just because yeah. Damien would not stop fanboying with Nell, like it was. Yeah, really I, hard. I like talking to Nell. It was fun. I mean, she's th- literally the creator of modern governance. Like she's also she's also just good at talking, unlike us. She's, well, I don't know. No, uh, she's good at it. She's good at it. 
I mean, um, I, I'm a lot like Grok. Yeah, you're a bit more like Grok. Uh, uh, last headline. Uh, speaking of our favorite drug dealers, uh, Starbucks uh, wants to open eight new stores a day from now until 2030. Wow. Wrap your head around that. Wrap your head around that. Matt, they want to add 20,000 new stores by 2030 in a long-term growth strategy, which they have named. Are you ready for it? This is the name yeah. of their long-term uh, growth strategy. Triple shot reinvention with two pumps. Oh! <laughs> it, I mean, you know, the, the this, marketing yeah. team probably spends a year on that name. Right? Is this is this not proof that like can we stop calling them like uh, anything but just a, 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 just a big weedy drug company? I mean, why Actually, why do we think that they're anything other than a than a cocaine factory? Speaking of, which do you think will grow faster, Starbucks or cannabis companies in New York City? Because you can't go a block anymore in New York without. Oh, is that right? Like it just the whole city smells like. Yeah, weed. it's it's the it, same up here. Unfortunately, like I I have to pass. Three different weed shops to, to get to the pharmacy, basically. Like, they're just everywhere. Which, imagine if now in in a growth-like market where every corner is either a Starbucks or a cannabis store, yeah. you can go get some cannabis, smoke it while you drink your coffee, and yeah. offset each other. What do we... Well, I Matt, mean, with something we talked about back in the day, it's not going to be that long that that the market is going to accept a Starbucks also probably selling weed eventually, right? I mean, it's yes. gonna, it, it, it'll take some time, but eventually we're going to be comfortable with that. I, it's, I, is it 100% certainty or 95% certainty that Starbucks sells cannabis at some point? Uh, I'm going to go with 100. Is that is that allowed? I think that's allowed. I also am going to give yeah, rate this, this headline. Let's story get out of here. as my, my final rating here. Eight new stores a day. <laughs> Uh, eight, uh, I have to give this a coconut latte on a scale of Americano to caramel macchiato. Unfortunately, I think you're right because it's a it's a delicious prospect. <laughs> I, I, it's not the worst thing I've heard in my life. That's all we got. That's Damian Rollis. I am your analyst, Holm Matt Muscardi. We are Free Float. We will be back on Wednesday. We're going to do... Oh, again, we're, two we're not of us. done. Now, the two of us are going to do a short Woke Wednesday before we have a clip from the Nell Minow podcast. Ooh. Then we'll drop all of clip? that. Yeah, or just okay. a clip. We're going to Nell talking about the anti woke, actually, and her testimony. And then we'll drop all of Nell, an hour of Nell, on Thursday. Super fascinating you person. Listen to the whole conversation. You should. You should. It's fantastic. And, uh, and then we'll be back Friday to wrap the week. Until then, goodbye. Goodbye.